Well, it is raining and it is cold, which is a good thing, because that means up there on that mountain over there, it is snowing. And I have that thing and I have that thing ready to go play in the snow. The only problem is they need to be hauled up there by that thing and the four wheel drive is not working. So we're gonna have to address that today. And uh, my gutter's working, so that's good. But we still have not cleaned up the mess we made from the last big project in the shop, which was uh, rear hitch and all that. And you can see the whole sticks outside the cross member like everyone was worried about. Uh, but since we haven't cleaned up our mess from our last project, the most logical way to start out for a new project is to just leave it start the new project and add on to it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Everybody wants a cold start, so the process of starting a 1948 Jeep goes as such. Key on. That should be enough. That was enough. still a little cold but it'll do okay now we got to pull it up onto the ramps normally I'd put it in four low so that the ramps don't just slide across the shop floor but four wheel drive's not working so let's see if they stay please stay I knew that'd work no problem so if you're ever trying to pull a vehicle up on ramps on concrete and the ramps keep sliding because you don't have your four wheel drive, uh, stick a piece of cardboard under the front edge of the ramp and it helps it grip really good. It actually works really well as you just saw. So yes, wheels are chalked, parking brakes on, it's in park and other such stuff. So, okay, so now I need to crawl under it here and here because those are where the two connectors are that I need to get to to rewire. And of course, that's right where all the water's dripping down. So. That's handy. Okay, and as far as the shop being a huge mess and there being stuff everywhere and me not wanting to organize anything just yet, there's a reason for that. One, look at the cats up there made their little home. Uh, one, I got too many other things to do. Two, I'm gonna rip down this whole room, gut it and tear it out of here so that this is one big open shop. And once I do that, everything in here is gonna move around to a new home. So putting everything in a home now and organizing it doesn't make a lot of sense when in a few days I'm just going to have to do it all again. So, so all this stuff is going to get shoved way off over in a corner in a big old pile mess. And this thing is going to get ripped apart and out of here. And then all this stuff is going to get uh, something done with it that hopefully looks halfway decent by the time we're done. So we'll go into our Harbor Freight scan tool here. I don't know how well you can see that on the screen but we can go down to scan all modules. Yes, that's our vehicle. I don't know how well you can see that because on my end, it looks like just a big white blank screen. So it's thinking. Okay, it's all thinked out. So now we can go down to, that's the one we want, drivetrain control module. Front axle disconnect control circuit low. And since this truck has already had two issues with the four wheel drive, right in that same area that we're fixed, I'm pretty sure I know what the third is and I know what the fourth will be here very soon. So we're just gonna eliminate all that problem. Nope. Nope. Yep. This is what we need. Okay, one thing about me that makes zero sense at all, it's totally illogical, makes no sense, uh, but if you know anything about me, you know that's kind of par for the course is, I hate creepers. I cannot stand these things. I hate them, I don't like using them. I would rather crawl on the floor any day than lay on a creeper and roll under something. I, I just hate the things and I don't know why. But, since it's wet on the floor, I don't wanna get super wet. I'm going to use a creeper. Okay, so here we are under the truck. This is the front axle. This is the front axle disconnect. It, it disconnects the passenger side front axle shaft and the rest of everything because for some stupid reason they think that's a better idea than having hubs to disconnect stuff. 
It's dumb. I don't like it. But when I got this truck, this module right here is what controls the disconnect. Uh, this ground wire was tapped into and bypassed the rest of them. So clearly at some point, the ground wire somewhere up there uh, had gone bad, gotten cut, gotten pinched or something and stopped working. So they just ran a whole new one instead of finding the, the brake and fixing it. So the four-wheel drive had quit working on someone at some point in the past. And then when I got the truck, the four-wheel drive didn't work again. So after a whole bunch of diagnostics and tracing all the wires, we found that this wire here, which is the signal wire, and it lets the computer up there know what position this is in, the signal wire had no continuity. Uh, so whatever pinched this ground wire somewhere up there probably pinched the signal wire too. So to get by real quick, I just ran a new wire around it and bypassed it because this wiring harness runs up over through the suspension, around the front of the engine, all the way that, and comes down under the front bumper to another connector, and somewhere between those two points, and there's a good section of it, I, you just can't see no matter what you do. So somewhere in there, the wire got pinched and cut, so I just bypassed it with a new one. Now the computer is telling me that the control wire, which should be this one, uh, has no signal. And I'm going to run continuity test on it between this plug and that plug to verify that, but that means this wire probably has now gotten pinched because I was up on a rough, bumpy dirt road when the light came on telling me that I had this problem. Which means you get no four-wheel drive because the wire that controls this doesn't work. So I'm going to verify this, uh, check for continuity in the wire, verify that it's dead, and then since that only leaves one wire, which is the main power wire, left running through its original location, why don't we just gut them all and start over? So first thing we got to do is unplug this connector here. And now we go up under the front bumper to the other end of this wiring harness. Still hate creepers. And then we get here to this other plug. You can see the front axles back there now. Uh, modules on the back side right there. So somewhere between the wiring going up, over through all that, and getting to here, they're getting pinched. Okay, so I am plugged in to the control circuit wire on the back side back here. And I'm tapped into the control circuit wire on the plug up here. And you hear there is no beeping sound. That means there's no continuity in the wire. Now if we had continuity in the wire, when I touch these two together, you'd hear a beep. No beep means bad wire. Okay, that means we get to do the satisfying part of this job, which is take all these wires right here in this wiring harness, and just start cutting until everything is gone. Time to start over. Okay, we got our two plugs here. Obviously we need to connect them together with some wire in between. But what I forgot is the colors on one end are different than the colors on the other end because there's connections in the middle that the colors switch. So I went in and cut those connections out so I can see that the blue wire on this end turns into the pink and green wire on this end so we know to connect that wire to that wire and so forth. So I don't have any four wire but I do have this shielded two wire that I used for my uh, uh, switch pod upgrade that I did. So we'll just run two lengths of this between there and just have to do them one at a time so I remember color coding on this and should be fine. Okay, we've got our temporary wiring harness up here. We didn't go run through the frame rail and all that stuff. We just hooked it from one plug to the other so we can test it out and make sure this works. And as you can see, I ditched that whole stupid creeper thing. It's over there. I don't even know why I own that thing. And I just put on my convex suit so I can crawl on the ground and do it the right way. Oh, and fun fact about my convex suit. I, uh, off me. I uh, used to run a uh, dozer and water truck on the fires down in Northern California for a Cal Fire. Uh, not for Cal Fire, Cal Fire Contractor. Um, and I learned real quick when you go to fire camp, don't wear your orange jumpsuit. Find another color. All right, so now we erase the codes. We power up the truck. If you don't step on the brake when you do that, it doesn't start. Now we can hook that to four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive lock. Back to two-wheel drive. Back to two-wheel drive. Look at the data on the scanner. 
No drivetrain control module faults. We did it. Okay, everything's cleaned up, taped up, zip tied in place, finished all in there with enough movement to where the suspension can cycle and should all be fine. So now we can take it for a test drive. Okay, test drive went good on this truck. So we did some swapping around. We got this trailer hooked up because we got to go run. I bought a new welding table. So we got to go pick that up a little later tonight after the guy gets home from work. I uh, just swapped these tires and wheels back to this one because the new tires and wheels for this trailer finally showed up. Well, to be fair, two of them showed up a month ago. Uh, one of them showed up somewhere in between and the last one finally showed up today. What had happened was when I bought this trailer, it needed all new tires and wheels. Before I even got home with it, I ordered a complete set of these tires and wheels from eTrailer.com and they completely screwed me. I paid for the expedited shipping to get them here as quick as possible because I needed to put this trailer to work right away. I had stuff to do. Well, the expedited order showed up in three days, like they said, with three tires. Why would you send out three tires? That makes no sense. What's even worse is two of the tires and wheels look just like this. And the third one looked just like this because it was this. Notice how that looks different than that. Yes, same rim design. You might say, just paint it black. Nah. This is powder coated smooth surface. This is machined aluminum rough surface. Totally different. Plus they sent four center caps. I don't want center caps because if you put center caps on it. You got to take the whole wheel and tire off to grease the hub. And I'm too lazy to do that. So I tell them all this. They said, send me a picture of what you got. We'll get it straightened out. So I sent them a picture of what I got. I sent them what I was supposed to get. They said, we'll get it rush delivery right away. So I waited and waited. And finally the UPS man shows up. And he gets out of the truck with a little box, just this big. I'm like, the heck is that? That's not two tires and wheels. They sent me no tires and wheels and two more center caps. Now I have six center caps when I ordered zero and I was very upset. So I call them again. They promise to straighten it out. Now, finally today, a month after I ordered this rush delivery, the other two tires and wheels finally showed up. But in the meantime, I robbed the tires and wheels off of my other trailer so that I could use this one because as I said, I needed to use it. So then my other brand new trailer has no tires and wheels on it and I can't use that one. Today, I needed that one. Luckily today, these ones showed up. So I could put all these ones on this trailer, put those ones on that trailer, and everything's finally right with the world. Except for one thing. They are hounding me like crazy to send this tire back. They told me I needed to send it back right away, back when I got it and told them it was the wrong one. I told them when you send me the tires I paid for, I'll send you back your tire. But I didn't think that was gonna take a month. So now I'm spiteful and I'm not sending that thing back. I told them, eTrailer.com, I had to wait a month for you guys, you could wait a month for me. I'll send your tire back when I have time, not when you want it. I had to wait, you can wait. But aside from all that, this trailer actually cleaned up really good. Did some touch up painting along the front, just cleaned everything up. Half the new deck boards are in. I still got to do the centers, new tires and wheels. And this is actually turning out to be a really nice looking trailer. And mechanically this trailer is in great shape because it's damn near brand new. It was hardly ever used, but now it's looking right too. So I am very happy with this trailer now. Okay, now that I'm done with my childish rant, I've got to go down to the pine to pick up this welding table. It's definitely going to be dark by the time I get there and probably going to be dark by the time I get back too. So that is going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little one and don't worry about the table. You'll probably see it next time. But for this video, that's it. See you guys later.